The scars of war have shaped Somalia's capital, Mogadishu, for the last two decades. 21 years after the country lost its central government, much of the city is still bullet-ridden. Its once elegant Italian it features gone to waste, while many of its residents survive in rag and plastic shelters, with others taking safety in the crumbling ruins of roofless buildings. Amidst the lull that Mogadishu has been experiencing since August 2011, the city has come back to life, one step at a time. In the last few months, Mogadishu has a new face. Construction is booming, businesses are thriving, and yes, once ghost ridden government buildings like the National Theatre and the Parliament are even being refurbished. One such structure that is attracting the public's attention is a newly renovated constitution building, a well fenced, expansive compound that will host over 1,000 delegates who will discuss and pass a new constitution for Somalia by August this year. The constitution building, as you have seen, is one of the biggest projects that are being undertaken around Mogadishu. It was done in a record time of three weeks. We were selected out of 35 companies which bid to do the work, so we were very determined to finish the work on time. The compound, which used to be the central police vehicle service centre, was first built by the Italian colonial forces, though it was later revamped by the German government in 1965. The compound has also had its fair share of history. In July 2007, during the tenure of the late Abdullah Yusuf's government, it hosted the Somali Reconciliation Conference, led by Ali Mahdi Mohammed. The compound and its buildings were seriously damaged after the conference, as a result of the ongoing clashes in the area. As part of Turkey's efforts to restore public services and contribute to the infrastructural development of Somalia, the Turkish Cooperation and Coordination Agency, also known as TICA, decided to give out a tender in order to repair the compound ahead of the historic meeting. Many people, before we start this project, they told us uh, you cannot do, even you do, with some, if you do, Somalian company do this project, they cannot finish it in three weeks. Maybe it will take one year, two years. <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, uh, I can say that this joint power, this joint energy between Somalia and Turkish, uh, it shows all the country, all the world, that we can do anything, we can, we can do all the good things with our joint powers. The bid was eventually given to Star Construction and Logistics Company, which agreed to give the compound and the buildings within its vicinity a complete facelift in just under a month. When we first went with the Turkish agency representatives to do a site visit, the head of the agency told us that the general feeling people have of Somalis is that they cannot do anything. So he asked me, can you do it? And I said, I will try. Then he said, I don't want you to try. I want you to do it and finish it. After three days, I gave him a report stating that we will finish the project in less than a month. He didn't believe it. In a record time of four weeks and under very difficult circumstances, Star Construction managed to repair the rundown site, paint it, install new roofing, restore the sewer system and rehabilitate the hand dug well in the compound. The company also set up a surround sound system and mounted projection screens in the main conference hall. We signed the contract on the 1st of April and started the work on the same day. So the biggest challenge that we faced was that we were working in a very security sensitive area. But fortunately, nothing dangerous happened while we worked there. We also faced a problem with manpower. For instance, in the first few weeks, I needed over 300 workers and I got only 20 in the first day. Then the next day I got less than 40. Uh, this project, it had the eyes of the most important people in this country and you, we, we could not 
fail. It, it would have been a fiasco if that happened. In the end, the restoration and construction included two halls, one for the conference and one for refreshments, an expansive kitchen with a small hall, a generator room, a two-story building, and a mosque, both for men and women. For several months now, the audacity of peace has shaped Mogadishu for the better. Somali-owned companies like Star Construction and Logistics have changed the perception that the Somali people cannot take charge of their destiny and change for the better. We want to thank Star Construction and Logistics, a Somali company that has proved that it can do professional work with good quality. There was doubt among the international community of whether a Somali company can actually do this work. But now, this doubt has been repelled. This has given hope to investors and aid organizations like Tika, who now believe that Somalia's future is brighter and better. There is no stopping for the Star Construction and Logistics Company. They are already on their next big project, the renovation of the Women's Association Building, a four-story structure built in 1985. Star Construction wants to be at the center of the progress that is taking place in Mogadishu to rebuild the pothole roads and the round-down buildings, both public and private. The building, which is located opposite the Somali National Theater and which changed into an IDP settlement in the last two decades, will be ready and in usable condition by July this year. As Somalia shackles off the chains of war, it is companies like Star Construction and Logistics that have resolved to restore dignity and hope in a country that has known so little of that. Be one of the of the uh, biggest reasons that we should be very proud of being involved in such a project. Yeah, I don't know which way this thing will sway, but uh, I'm, I'm very glad that. Uh, We've been part of something that is so big in this country, like uh, uh, being part of renovating the building where the future of the Somali people will be decided. It's, it's a big thing. <laughs>